one of the most challenging things every music producer has to face, especially in rock, metal and EDM genres, is to get loud and impactful yet clear mixes. Here's the thing, it doesn't have to be that hard. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to achieve loudness, clarity and punch in your mixes by using Clippers, the secret weapon for many top mixing and mastering engineers. In their quest for loudness, many producers and mixers turn to traditional approaches like using heavy compression or slamming a limiter at the end of their mix bus chain, which comes at a very high cost. While these techniques can increase perceived loudness and bring a sense of density in the mix, they are also bringing a lot of what's called intermodular distortion, which brings artifacts and unpleasant distortion to the mixes. Another pitfall of relying on that final limiter is the loss of dynamics. So the more you'll be pushing it, the more you can have this pumping effect. So relying solely on a limiter to do all the hard work for dynamic control at the end of your mix bus chain is probably the worst way to go. This is where clipping comes in. Clipping is a technique that allows you to control peaks of your audio signal, effectively increasing the overall loudness of your mix without introducing too much distortion. By using clipping strategically, you can achieve a louder, more impactful mix without sacrificing clarity or dynamics, which are essential for a professional sounding mix. But clippers are oftentimes misunderstood and can be daunting because when used improperly, they can actually obliterate your mix. So I'll show you exactly how to use them so that you can take your mixes to the next level. So you're probably wondering why not just use a compressor or a limiter instead of a clipper? Well, compressor depending on how you set them up, they can actually increase your peaks relatively to the average of your sound rather than decrease them. So that's where the clippers can do a much better job. Let's check it out. So using 4 dB of gain reduction with this compressor at 0.1 millisecond attack time, which is the fastest setting, you can see that there's not such a big difference between the peak and the meat of the snare. If I actually increase the attack time, you're going to see that the peaks are actually increasing even though I have a 4 decibel gain reduction. So essentially what we're doing here is not really controlling the peaks of that snare drum, it's changing the envelope itself. If I use a clipper here, you're going to see that the ratio between peaks and let's say average or meat of that snare drum, now that's a different story. So let's see how the clipper does here. So you can see here that I'm shaving off 4 dBs of the peaks of that snare drum. So the ratio between peak and meat or average of that snare drum now becomes much more interesting and that is done in a very transparent way and I'm not changing the envelope, meaning the shape of that attack, decay, sustain and release. I was using this clipper in the hard mode. So if I use a soft clipper, then it's going to start changing the shape a little bit because it's going to round off the edges and not simply shave off the peaks. So let's check out how it sounds like in soft mode. Clippers in soft mode are also very useful. Sometimes, for example, for kick drums, you can actually preserve a little bit more the body and the low end of your kick rather than using a hard clipper. Now let's see how the limiter is going to do. We're a gain match, so we're cutting 4 dB again. So 
So in this case, the limiter does a better job than the compressor at controlling the peaks. But the problem is we're really chopping off the attack and we can actually hear it. We're losing the transient. Whereas using the hard clipper, the transient is preserved. So that's a really beneficial way in this case to use a clipper instead of a limiter. So compressors and limiters are great tools, but in this specific case, clippers do a much better job at controlling peak levels in a transparent way without losing focus and affecting the envelope of the sound. So soft clipping versus hard clipping, which one should you use and when? Soft clipping can add warmth and texture to audio in a more controlled and subtle way, whereas hard clipping really cuts everything above a certain threshold. So it's more gritty, it's more aggressive, and the distortion introduced in the process of hard clipping can be a bit harsher. So let's use Newfangled Audio Saturate here to show you the difference between soft and hard clipping. So here you can see that this is a threshold. Everything that's gonna go above that is gonna be cut off when it's on hard mode. And as I will slide it down to soft, you're gonna see more gain reduction, and you're gonna see that it's gonna start rounding of the transients by preserving a little bit more of the body of that snare drum. Let's try it on a kick drum now. So when used on kicks, if you use a hard clipper, you can really cut the punch and the low end. So you have to be very careful. Let's see the difference with a clipper, a limiter, and a compressor on a drum bus. Obviously, there's already some processing being applied. We'll start here with the soft clipper. In this case, when I use the clipping mode and I use the soft clip function here, it really brings the presence on the drums. It gives a nice edge to the snare drum as well. Here, I'm gonna use a hard clipper on the drum bus and you're gonna see how transparent it is. So one nice function of this plugin here is the fact that you can link in and output and you can only look here at what's being clipped. When I will click here, you can see the distortion being introduced by the clipping process. So let's listen to it with the plugin bypass first. And if I soften the clipping, meaning a soft clipper, you're gonna see that it's gonna sound much more distorted, obviously, because we're clipping more than just what's above threshold. It's really nice to have clippers which have built-in link function between 
input and output. That way, you don't let your brain trick you into thinking that the clipping process is actually helping your sound and you can actually see the difference that it makes. So right now we clipped about 5.5 decibels. It's a lot and it was done in a very transparent way, especially when we use it in the hard clipping mode. You have to remember that this distortion that's introduced is masked in the mix, so you don't really hear it unless you solo it if the plugin has the function to do so. But this is still distortion being introduced in your mix and this can add up and create a brittle and harsh type of sound. To avoid intermodular distortion, which is the worst type of distortion that you want to avoid for clarity in your mixes, the best way is to clip bits by bits in individual tracks and then in buses rather than go at the very end and clip like 8 dBs on your master bus. So by using an oscilloscope, it can really show you how the sounds are summing together. Because if you're adding a kick bus and a snare bus, let's say you're playing a four on the floor type of beat, then on top of that, you're adding bass, you're adding keyboards potentially. So all these sounds are summing at the same time and you can see if they're overlaid like this, where the peaks should be chopped off, if necessary, to control your average volume. <laughs> So by using this oscilloscope, I can narrow down, for example, just drums and bass and see how they're interacting here. And perhaps I could use a sidechain compressor to dock a little bit more the bass when it's time for the kick rather than clip. But again, this is a decision you can take later. But seeing this oscilloscope really gives you a nice map and you can also, for example, unmask the guitar bus, the samples, the vocals. So this really shows you what's being summed and where you can work with your clippers to cut those peaks and to control your average loudness. So there's no set rule, but I really like to use clipping on kicks, snare and drum bus. When we're talking about tonal content like guitars, strings and things like that, you can perhaps use a soft clipper, but limiters tend to be more transparent. And if you compare them with compressors, they're gonna also react much faster. So on guitars bus, I always prefer limiters. So now let's use a clipper on the master bus to increase perceived loudness. As we're summing together all our different buses like bass, drums, guitars, new peaks will be created. So we have to address those peaks as well if we want to have maximum loudness. But we'll have to be more careful than ever because if we go too hard, we'll introduce a lot of intermodular distortion, especially if we're starting to chop off in the sustained material and not only the peaks, which will usually be resulting from kick and bass being summed together. So let's start with only one or two dB of gain reduction with the hard clipping mode. Here's the unwanted distortion being added. So this is being masked in the mix, so we don't hear it, but it's still being introduced in the mix. And if we push it way harder, you're gonna see much more distortion. Very unpleasant distortion. So that's why we have to be extremely careful. But if it's only little bleeps of transient material, you won't really notice and it won't be annoying to the ear.
So here we shaved off about 3 dBs of our peak levels and you can see how transparent it was. But as you lower the threshold and start digging in the sustained material, you can really hear the harsh distortion being introduced. So you want to avoid that and try to only let the final limiter touch to that sustained material but again being very careful and as you control those peaks all along the way at the very end the peaks you'll have to deal with will be much less pitfalls of clipping so first is over clipping when in doubt go easy on clipping especially when we're talking about kicks and snare so it's nice to have control over the peak levels but if you shave off too much from your kick and snare you're going to lose the initial attack so you have to be very careful about that using clipping on the mix bus can be very dangerous so as you get familiar with how to use clippers i would highly recommend you only start on individual tracks and then on buses and only when you get more experience, you try it on the mix bus. Not monitoring levels when clipping can be a huge problem because your brain's gonna make you think that it's sounding better when the signal gets louder. So if the clipping plugin that you're using doesn't have a match function between input and output, make sure that you're using a meter after to make sure that the changes that you're doing to your sounds are actually beneficial. Make sure to use clipping in moderation because although we want to control peaks, we still want dynamics. So you can't cut off all attacks especially kick, snare, and percussive material. I really hope you liked the video. If you did, please click like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And if you want to dig deeper on how saturation can help you achieve exciting and loud sounding mixes, check out this video that talks about my favorite saturation mixing hacks. I look forward to seeing you there.